Well, good afternoon. It's uh, it's always exciting to get back in front of so many familiar faces. I think I know just about everybody in the room, and the few that I don't, uh, we've probably met in passing at some point. And so, uh, so it's nice to come back and have a chance to just share a few thoughts before uh, really trying to listen. I think this is at least the hundredth opportunity that I've had to get out and talk to groups over the last ten months. And uh, so every day I'm someplace. Uh, every day it's a uh, it's community leaders, leaders, it's business leaders, it's economic development groups, it's peers from around the country, and uh, the, the story is starting to take hold. I mean, people want to understand what this reinventing Michigan is all about, and how we're going about reinventing Michigan, how we're moving away from some of the the programs and strategies that are really old school in terms of economic development. You know, this ever increasing you know tax credit uh, game. That, that we've all played, uh, where one community just simply layers on more tax credits and the next one more and the next one more. Uh, and it really becomes a, a battle that frankly is very, very difficult to win. So we're trying to reinvent that and move to a different approach. The other thing that we're trying to do in terms of our reinventing process, we're really trying to you know, change the brand or, or, or in, improve the brand that we have as a state. Uh, most people you know, have probably heard of the Pure Michigan brand. It's so cool. It's been used for tourism. I, I see Mary Kerr, uh, the, 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 uh, the Ann Arbor CBB, has been a wonderful supporter and partner uh, with Pure Michigan. But we think the brand is so good that we really ought to extend it to everything that we do. So we've really adopted it as a business brand in addition to just being a tourism brand. And I'll tell you a little bit more about how we're doing that. Uh, let me just tell you a story first before you know going too far with this. We first said we're going to extend this brand to to all, uh, you know, everything that we do in state government. What we found out is that MEPC had so protected this brand that other state departments couldn't use it. So I found that kind of interesting as we were out, you know, selling other state departments on using Pure Michigan and, you know, everything that they did, uh, we discovered that we had in fact told people they couldn't use it. So we're trying to fix that now. And those are the kinds of challenges that we have as we try and figure out how to best get our message out. So here's how we're positioning the brand, and then I'll sit down and, and let you all ask a bunch of questions. We think that, we, that our brand personality as a state is one of being honest, hardworking, optimistic, flexible, confident, and smart people. Now that's our brand positioning, and when you really think about us, if you really think about what has made us great over the years, it's hard to disagree with any one of those. We think that our brand should really be built on four pillars, and those four pillars just happen to be four C's. Uh, commitment, capability, cultivation, and culture. And so what do I mean by those four pillars? Because that's really how you start to move a brand forward and how we're trying to move the state forward in terms of our economic development efforts. So let me start with, uh, with culture, because if you don't get the culture right, it's hard to get everything else right. So I'll start with culture. We want to build a culture that is flexible and pro-business. And I think we have an administration that is clearly flexible and pro-business. In fact, Governor Snyder you know, talks about it all the time. Some of the actions that have been taken have clearly demonstrated that we're going to be a pro-business region. Our culture needs to become one of regional partnerships with business support networks that exist. Organizations like the Chamber, like Ann Arbor Spark, and so many other regional organizations that we have, the Small Business and Technology Development Center. These are organizations that represent partners that we have to build as a part of the culture that we have of, of getting things done through these key partners that we have. You know, this organization, the MEDC, really worked in a, an asylum and always after the fact invited partners to listen to the wonderful ideas that they had and all the great things they were going to do. But there was no buy-in because those partners were not a part of, of helping to develop those ideas and build those ideas. So the culture was one, not one of engaging in regional partnerships and inviting partners to participate. We have to become a, a state that really engages and supports you know, a vibrant uh, immigration and, and immigrant entrepreneurial, in particular, immigrant entrepreneurial policies. And the governor has been very proactive in talking about his support for immigration in this state uh, in particular. We have a work ethic that's second to none. We know that we have a strong work ethic, so that's in our culture, and we want to make sure we build on it. And then, you know, we have this unmatched pure Michigan quality of living that's just hard for anybody to debate. 
And no matter where I travel in the country or in the world, we just did a big field trip over to Asia a couple weeks ago. And I can tell you what Michigan has to offer in terms of quality of living is second to none. So that's the pillar of culture that we're trying to build on. Some of those pieces are in place. Some of them we have some work to do. But it's clearly a direction that we have to head in. We want to talk about commitment as the second pillar. Commitment in terms of how we're going to support business. An 86% reduction in our business taxes in this state. That's huge. It's something that no other state has done in the past you know, several years. In fact, most many states and some of our, our neighboring states are actually looking to increase the cost of business by increasing taxes. That 86% reduction amounts to about a $1.8 billion reduction in taxes, and nearly 100,000 businesses in our state are no longer subject to a business tax. I think that sends a message of commitment to the business community. Access to capital is probably the thing we hear about is most in need from businesses when we go out and talk to them. Taxes, or, I'm sorry, uh, uh, capital and talent are uh, probably the two most important. But we're making a commitment to capital. We've gone out and found capital sources that simply didn't exist over the past several years. In fact, we talked to business after business after business whose number one challenge is finding the capital they need to grow. And so if some of our programs are going to work, we had to find ways of getting access to capital. So we created a program that we call Pure Michigan Business Connect. As a part of that, we had a number of financial institutions with Huntington Bank being the kickoff bank that supported the program to the tune of $2 billion. When we look at it combined, we probably are near $3 billion of private capital that's available in partnership with us to help get businesses growing in the state of Michigan. On our, on our side, we've got about $100 million that we're using as a collateral uh, support and as loan participation. It's a program designed by MEDC that the federal government likes so much that they scaled it to the national level and committed $1.5 billion to be used on a national, uh, nationwide basis to help companies who need access to capital. And we've got several other programs that, that I'll hopefully get to during some of the Q&A. But again, we're, we're, we're trying to fill that capital gap that exists in terms of our commitment. And then we just want to be progressive and support an ecosystem that will allow entrepreneurs to be successful. Now, I actually feel like I know a little bit about that. I know Governor Snyder knows a lot about that because we spent an awful lot of our time while I was here in Ann Arbor working on building an entrepreneurial ecosystem. That means having access to the right talent, access to innovation, access to great universities, uh, access to facilities like incubators, access to capital like the pre-seed fund, and so on. And building an ecosystem that makes it very easy for, for students, for faculty members, and for others who want to become entrepreneurs to get access. So those are some of the items in terms of our pillar of commitment. In terms of capability, we really had to think about this one long and hard because when we talk about our capability, we think of ourselves as being, you know, this wonderful automotive state that manufactures things, you know, that makes things in support of the auto industry primarily. We said, well, let's just take a step back and think about some of the other sectors that we have in our state and where they have strength. And it wasn't very difficult for us to think of other sectors, but at the end of the day, what we realized is that we make things. And we think that it's important for Michigan in terms of our capability to continue to sell the fact that we make things. We can make metal de medical devices. I know a cool little company out in, I think, Sile Township called Terumo Cardiovascular that makes a significant portion of the heart-lung machines and heart assist devices and is right here in Ann Arbor. We need to make sure that we're making things other than just automotive. We don't want to give up any of that. We want to take every automotive opportunity we can get. But we also have to tell the world that we can make other things. We can make aerospace. We can make medical device. We can make machine tool. We can make general industrial. And the list goes on. But somehow we've got to make sure that we're selling that as our capability, that we make things. Capability. We've got a highly skilled workforce. I can tell you, during our trip to Asia, the number one question that came up over and over again from each of the countries that we visited was they like Michigan, they understand Michigan, they know we have an incredible workforce here. They know that we can make things. And having workforce is pretty important. So a highly skilled, I think globally capable workforce is something that we have. We have great academic institutions, some of the leading academic institutions. You know, you've heard references to Eastern Michigan, the University of Michigan, Wayne State, Michigan State, and so many other schools that we have, great universities we have here in the state. 
we have infrastructure that's been built out over many decades here in our state, and that infrastructure is actually still relatively good, especially as I judge it against what I saw in Asia. And then finally, I think we just have innovation in our DNA. And I don't think that will ever go away. Sometimes that innovation doesn't get converted into entrepreneurship. In fact, I think we lost our way in terms of being entrepreneurs at some point, because when I ask about the great entrepreneurs from Michigan, the one that comes up most often is Henry Ford. And wait a minute, that was a long time ago. You know, who are the entrepreneurs of today? Who are the, who's the next Henry Ford? Who's the next W.K. Kellogg? Who's the next Charles Stewart Mott, right? We have to make sure that we unleash this DNA that we have and allow it to become entrepreneurial again. So we've got a pillar of capability that's pretty powerful. But we've got to cultivate it, so there's the pillar of cultivation. And we're trying to cultivate it with a strategy that we call economic gardening. It's the primary, to, uh, it's the primary brand that we're using for our Pure Michigan Business Connect program. It's about nurturing existing companies, those that are relatively small, from let's say 10 to 100 workers. And actually that represents the majority of businesses in our state, nearly 90%. We have to figure out ways to help those companies grow. Because if you just think about the 100,000 companies that are no longer on or subject to the, the Michigan business tax, if that 100,000 companies could each add one or two jobs, we start to make a lot of impact on the 800,000 jobs that we lost over the last decade or so. So this is a doable thing, but we've got to make sure that we're guarding. So in addition to reducing taxes, because by the way, just reducing the business tax by itself Businesses won't grow to the level that we need them to to recover the 800,000 jobs that we lost and then some. So we've got to do other things. We've got to help make business to business connections. So that's one of the things that we're doing now. You know, I was amazed when I got to MEDC that there was no effort underway or interest in making business to business connections. So when we started talking to companies like DTE and Consumers Energy and others, we said, if we could put together a program, would you be willing to commit more of your spend to Michigan-based companies. In other words, you're buying goods and services to the tune of billions of dollars. Could you commit a million of that in additional Michigan spend beyond what you do right now? Not only did they commit a million, they committed 500 million of new Michigan spend. And so my back of the envelope calculation says that for every 100,000 to 200,000 dollars, you pick the right number. But between 100 and 200 thousand dollars of new sales to any business represents one new employee. So at 500 million dollars, do the math and think about how many new employees that represents. Just because two companies have decided they're going to spend 500 million dollars more with Michigan-based companies. Now, what would happen if that gets extended to more and more businesses in our state? And by the way, we're out selling this as one of our tools that we'll have in our toolkit. And we've got a number of companies that we're in negotiations with now to sign up. They probably won't sign up as big as consumers in DTE, but they are interested in signing up because they know that by helping other Michigan businesses, they're gonna help themselves. We know that we have to help with exports. So a big part of what we did while we were in Asia, we tried to scope out export opportunities. And ironically, one of the ones that was most interesting was agriculture. And you don't have to drive more than 10 minutes from any Michigan city before you hit the rural communities. You know, 10 minutes from Detroit, and you see corn. One minute from Ann Arbor. In fact, Ann Arbor wants corn right in town. They already have chickens. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't have to go very far to identify opportunities for agricultural export. Uh, and then we already know what we can do in terms of, of manufacturing. So export is a key part of what we're doing, and we've actually put in place a small team of people to help businesses with export. Market research is another area where businesses say over and over again, we need to understand where the market opportunities are. I ran a manufacturing company that was an aerospace company. Some of you know that. Our company had a business cycle that one year, you know, my boss couldn't give me enough money in bonus, and the next year I was just glad I had a job because our sales were up and down as the aerospace industry went up and down. So we decided early on that we would start to think of ourselves a little bit differently than just being an aerospace company. We would become a power transmission or linear actuation company. And just by deciding that, we identified market after market after market opportunity that we can move our products into. So we went from aerospace to automotive to general machine tool to uh, industrial to aerospace or to defense. We were all over the place and we were selling products in volumes that we hadn't even imagined that we could. And the business had this nice steady growth over the 13 years that I was with the company. 